Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Art of Trade Station Drawing Tools in Chart Analysis. I want to appreciate the time that you guys are taking from your schedules to be here and learn a little bit about what Trade Station has done with drawing tools. Uh, we're going to talk about all the different drawing tools that are available and how you can draw them on Trade Station and how you can tweak the calculations. So we have our hands pretty much full for the next uh, 30 to 45 minutes, depending on how much time we spend on each one and how much uh, how many questions we get here in the chat. Before I get started, here are some um, announcements and important disclosures. Keep in mind that every symbol and idea that we talk about here is for demonstration purposes only. It is not a recommendation of TradeStation and online trading is not suitable for everyone. If you'd like to read more about the disclosures, go to the TradeStation website, scroll to the bottom of the page, and you're going to find most of our disclosures there if you scroll down to the bottom. So thank you everyone for being here. I'm going to switch over to my TradeStation platform and start introducing some of our drawing tools on the TradeStation platform. As an example here, I have a chart of Microsoft and it's a daily chart. At the top of the platform, you have a drawing menu. This is where all the drawing tools are. Now, if you're the type of TradeStation user that is going to draw continuously, it makes a lot of sense to display a charting toolbar so that you have easy access to all the tools that are available to draw on the chart. That way you don't have to keep on coming up here to the drawing menu and searching for the tool you're looking for. So let me show you the toolbar and if you'd like to go to the drawing menu then that's up to you. But let's go ahead and show you both and, and, and you, you be the one who chooses what is most comfortable. I'm going to go to the view menu and uh, I'm going to go to uh, the toolbars. And in the toolbars menu, I'm going to enable my drawing toolbar. This sets a collection of drawing tools right here on the left hand side of TradeStation. And it's kind of covered right now with the trading apps label, which I'm going to click and drag so that I can move to a different location. So I'm going to click that label, put it right here on the top. And that way I have my a clear view of all the tools in my drawing tools. Put your cursor on top of them and it should give you a data tool tips with the name of the drawing tool that you're going to be using. Again, I'm just showing you this so that if you like to have the toolbar on the left hand side running vertically, you can always access your tools that way. Another, another item that I wanted to show you right here in the drawing menu is the different types of pointers. By default, TradeStation will show you the small pointer. Uh, you can also select a large pointer, which, which will technically give you a larger arrow. Now that's all it does. So that's again drawing, a large pointer, or you can switch to a crosshairs pointer, which pretty much doesn't give you an arrow, it just gives you crosshairs. With any pointer in the trade station drawing menu, you can click and hold and get what we call the data tips window. This is a floating window that provides you detailed information on the candle where the vertical axis is. So over here, I can see that this is November 1st, of 2018 and I can see the open high low close of that particular candle. Now the position and the style of this data tips window can be adjusted. You go to the view menu, click on chart analysis preferences and in here go to the display tab. Inside the display tab there is a checkbox that says show data tips. First of all if that is not checked you will not be able to see the data tips window. You can also control where the where the data tips window is going to appear. By default, it shows below and to the right of the mouse pointer. And you can increase the number of columns to display. This is very convenient if you're using a multi-data chart and uh, you have more than three symbols in the chart because I think uh, by default, you can only see three columns. So if you have five or six different symbols, then you're going to be missing out on the data for those symbols. So always come here to the chart analysis preferences for you to change the way that the data tips looks. You may also change the style of the data tips window by using the Windows system colors. If you do that, look at how the data tip window looks now. I'm going to go to the view menu, chart analysis preferences, and I'm going to uncheck the use Windows system colors. Click OK. And now we're back to the original colors. Perfect. 
So now that we have that out of the way, I'm going to go back here to the drawing menu and I'm going to select the large pointer. In the drawing menu, we have a very useful functionality called pointer tracking. When you turn that feature on, let's say that you turn it on for the window and you click on the chart, it's going to leave a vertical line displayed on the graph running exactly where you clicked. Now, the point of pointer tracking is not only to give you a visual vertical line, but also to know where your spot is in relationship to other chart analysis windows. Let me bring up another chart analysis window here so that I can demonstrate. I want to go to trading apps and click on chart analysis. Let's uh, give the chart a few seconds to come up. I'm going to change the chart to a daily interval. I have the same uh, chart of Microsoft. Let me switch this chart to Apple, AAPL. Okay, and I'm going to go to window and arrange those windows horizontally. So now I have Apple on the top and I have Microsoft at the bottom. Let's suppose that the spacing in the candles is different from one to the other. Let's suppose that we have this chart right here a little bit more spaced out, the one on the top. You can see how I just pressed uh, the up arrow key on my keyboard to increase the bar spacing. Well, first of all, I need to go back to the drawing menu. And this is very important because when I went to pointer tracking, I only did it on one window. But notice what happens when I set it to workspace. If I set it to workspace and I click on this candle, you have a corresponding vertical line on every single chart of this window. So that you know that this candle that you clicked on on the top chart correlates to the one right below it. And it correlates in regards to date and time. That's how pointer tracking is used. You click on a candle and you see that exact same spot in time on all the windows that are in the workspace. That's if you set it right here to the drawing, pointer tracking, workspace mode. If you have it on global mode, global it just takes this feature one step further where not only you see this vertical line on every single chart, but you also see it on every single chart across all the different desktops that you have on your computer. So useful functionality. If you want to compare, you know, one candle to the same date candle on a different chart. So it allows you to find your spot very easily. So let me go ahead and turn this feature off. Let me close one of these charts and resize it so that we are back on one single chart. I left the chart of Apple. This is totally fine. Uh, I'm going to show you some other things here that, uh, that you can use. In the drawing menu, let's start off with some of the drawing tools that are um, less of an analytical value, some, some drawing tools that are used mostly for you to do some markings of your own. For example, if you want to use an up arrow or a down arrow to point certain sections of the chart, you can do that. Let's do a down arrow or an up arrow. You come over here. Let's say, for example, that you want to point to this little uh, trough. I click it and it gives you an arrow right there. I know it's hard to see because of the color, but I can right click on that arrow and say format arrow up. In here, I can change the style. Let's suppose that I want to use a bigger arrow. I can use maybe something like this maybe change it to yellow so it's uh, more uh, clear on the screen. And I can just uh, maybe set it as a default so that every time that I draw an arrow and I don't have to make the changes. Right now I have an up arrow. So now every time I come here to my toolbar on the left hand side and I click on the arrow up, I'm able to just click on any candle and there will be the exact same color and style. So that makes it very simple to use, okay? So at any time, if you want to remove any of these objects that you're putting on the chart, just click on it once and press delete on the keyboard. You'll see how the object goes away. Now, let me show you some other um, markings that you can do in the drawing menu. Most of the markings are going to be inside this section. I know, I'm not sure if you see, but there's, a, there's some, some sort of a horizontal gray line dividing this section. And we have, you know, the arrows, we have an ellipse, a rectangle, a text object. So if I wanted to draw a rectangle in a certain area, I can select it. Let's suppose that I want to draw it here in the front of the chart, maybe uh, from this high over here. So I click there and then I click on this low over here. Okay, so it draws a rectangle on my chart. 
Now I can control the transparency and I can control the colors. I can control everything of this rectangle. You just need to right click on its borderline. Notice that you can change the color, the style, the weight, the fill color, fill pattern, and the transparency. If I choose a transparency that is um, higher, let's choose a 60%, you can see that it's not so bright anymore. And you can create these more of a shaded area in the chart to identify certain sections. I find that to be very useful. In the drawing menu, uh, the same way that you have those rectangles, you have the ability to draw an ellipse. So if I click on ellipse and I click once to start the ellipse and I click twice to stop it, there we go. Again, we can right click over here, maybe right click on the borderline. If you right click on the center, it doesn't select it. So here I'm gonna change the color, let's say to a green, but I'm gonna change the transparency. I'm gonna go here to transparency and make it an 80%. So you can see how that's a green circle drawn on my chart. The same happens with text. Let's go to drawing and click on text. You can type anything on the chart. So let me come over here and say, click over here on this uh, peak and say, this, uh -oh. this is resistance. All right, and you can continue typing if you'd like. I'm gonna click on the background so that it stays there. This text can be changed as well. I can right click on the text and go to format text, or I can just uh, you know try to look at all the different options that are here. For example, if you wanna change the color and make it yellow, then right click. And here you cannot change the size, but if you wanna change the size, I can go to format text, maybe make it a 20. And if you'd like to set those as defaults, you can do so right here. I'm gonna click okay. And they there it is. One thing that I want to show you too is that these drawings that I'm making on the chart are, are specific to the symbol that's on the chart. I have Apple on the screen. So if I type in a different symbol, like for example, Microsoft, and I hit enter, I don't see those drawings anymore. But the good thing is that TradeStation knows what the drawings are that I drew on Apple. So if I were to put in Apple here again, AAPL, and I hit enter, then the drawings come back. This is as long as you keep the same chart window though, because if I go and I create a new chart, those drawing tools are gonna be gone. So it's very important that whenever you make some drawings and you want those drawings to be visible whenever you pull up a symbol, is that you continue using the same chart window. Very important. Let's go back in there and show you a couple more things. In the drawing menu, uh, let's see, let's talk about vertical lines. Let me click on vertical line. A vertical line is a very nice visual. For example, you can click on any candle and it just draws a vertical line just like that. For any reason that you wanna mark a, a, a candle, you can use a vertical line to do so. And it gives you the date and the time very clearly right here on the top of the line. What I've done to this line is I've changed the font style and the thickness of the line. And you can do that on your trade station as well. Right click on the line and you can say format the vertical line. You can change the color, the style, the weight and everything that we do on all drawings. All right. The nice thing about these vertical lines is that you can also, um, they also extend through analysis techniques. So if I were to insert an indicator, for example, let me put a volume average indicator at the bottom, volume average. I'm gonna change the style so it's easier to see on the screen. The volume average, I'm gonna make it thicker. And the volume, I'm gonna make it this thick thickness. Okay, I'm gonna make that as a default. I click okay. So notice that I put in the volume indicator at the bottom and I can see, for example, this particular high volume on a red candle. I can see the date, it happened on April 9th of the year 2019. So these vertical lines just make a very nice marker on your trade station charts. Another thing that I wanted to show you is horizontal lines because I think those are very useful. I'm gonna go to the drawing menu and click on horizontal line, or I can go here to my toolbar on the left-hand side, and here's my horizontal line. I'm gonna draw my horizontal line right at 200. Okay, here's 200. What I can do, 
in order not to worry about where I'm going to click is I can click and hold. When you click and hold, you can pretty much bring the line anywhere you want. So let me go ahead and try to put it right at 200. And you can see that I'm having a little bit of a hard time setting it right at 200. It goes from 204 to 199.95. That's okay. You know, you don't have to be so precise because you can go into the settings afterwards and make it more precise. But as soon as I dropped it in there, you can see that it shows the price on the left-hand side, 200.04. Let me go ahead and edit the price so that it's a little bit more precise. I'm going to right-click on it, format horizontal line, and I'm going to go to the data tab. And this is where you change the price that the trend line, I mean, or that the horizontal line is set to. So let me go ahead and type in 200 in there, zero, zero, and then I click OK. And there we go. Now it doesn't say 200.04, it says 200. Uh, notice also something really interesting. If you click on the line, you're going to see some white dots appear on that line. All the dots mean is that the object has been selected. And it happens on every drawing that you select. If you click on the vertical line, the white dots appear on the white line, on the vertical line. If you click on this green ellipse, the white dots appear on that. That just means you that you've selected that object and you can press delete, you can click and drag it, you can you know, do all sorts of things to that drawing object. One thing that I wanted to show you is what happens when you change the time frame. For example, I've drew that horizontal line at 200, but what happens when I switch over here to a five minute chart? Take a look. A five minute chart does not show any of the drawings that I did. That horizontal line that I drew was at 200, correct? The reason why it's not showing is because the price scale here doesn't allow the horizontal line to display. The lowest price that I see here is 207.20. In order for you to see a drawing object in a chart by using different time frames, is just making sure, first of all, that the price where the line is drawn is visible on the chart, and also that the candle that holds the anchor point of any of these drawing objects is also in the chart. So I'm gonna bring down my chart. I'm gonna reduce my bar spacing as much as I can. This is all the data that's on the chart at the moment. You can see that you still don't see the 200 mark here, but I can do something else. If I don't want to load historical data, one thing that I can do is I, I can turn on background dragging. There's a little button here. I can put my cursor right here on the price scale and I can click and drag until I see 200 and I can see the line show up there. So just keep that in mind. Whenever you're working with different time frames, the price scale may not allow you to see what you have drawn. I know that I drew a lot of, um, I drew a, um, a box and I drew some text and it's not visible here, it's because of the historical data. The vertical line that I drew was back in April of, uh, of this year. So 60 days back is not going to show me even the vertical line. But let's see. Here I have 60 days, and that's where we start seeing our ellipse. See? We weren't seeing it before because we didn't have enough historical data to account for the data where it was drawn. Let me switch this to a daily chart. Okay, we're back on daily, and you can see that everything else comes back on. Now, there are some other drawing tools like trend lines and cycles and regression channels. Let's, took, let's take a look at some of them. We already saw vertical line. We already saw horizontal line. One more thing that I wanted to show you about the horizontal lines that I think it's crucial for anybody that's using charting in TradeStation, the ability to set up an alert on that horizontal line. So if the price activity, which is right now at 207, drops and it crosses over that line of 200, I want to be alerted. Most of these drawing tools that you use in TradeStation have the ability to have alerts. So I'm going to double click on that horizontal line and go to the alerts tab. I'll click enable alert and I'll choose this option here that's um, named breakout intra and interbar. Intra and interbar covers you in two scenarios. It covers you when it touches the line. That means intra bar, meaning that it just crosses through it, or 
you can use interbar just in case there's a gap and it doesn't touch the line. So there's an interbar, in between bars. As soon as I put an enable alert, I can click on this configure button to change, you know, the way that I'm being alerted. You can, you know, set up a sound, you can set up a pop-up message. This is true for trend lines, this is true for horizontal lines. So feel free to go right click on any of these drawing tools and edit the alert so that you can be alerted when the price crosses over it. All right, I'm gonna click OK. And as soon as I click OK, that line is hot. When the price touches it, it's gonna trigger an alert. All right, let's take a look at some other drawing tools. Now my chart is, is getting pretty busy. One thing that I can do is I can click on each one of these lines and remove them the way that, the way that I showed you. Or let me show you a quick way for you to remove all drawing tools. Just go to the drawing menu. There's something here called um, rem um, remove drawing objects right here. When you click on it, it brings up this dialog with uh, the option to check everything that you've drawn. Okay, you have this option here on the right that says select all. Only the items that you've drawn are the ones that are shown though, which is fine. If I click on select all and then I click okay, notice how everything that I drew on the chart is gone. Let's talk a little bit more about some analytical um, drawing tools. I'm gonna go to the drawing menu and let's go to trend line. Let me draw a trend line. And let me draw a trend line maybe from, I'm gonna use, not this one because it's right at the edge of the chart, but I'm gonna use maybe this one right here. I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna click over here just to, on this low right here. All right, you can see the white boxes we already talked about that those are just uh, selection indicators. If you click on the background, those boxes go away. I drew the trend line freestyle meaning that I clicked on where the line began and I clicked on where the line ended. And if I click on the line, you can see that the bigger white boxes are the anchor points. And you can take one of those anchor points and move them you know, in any place or any direction. I'm gonna put it right there at that low. One thing that I wanted to show you is the snapping functionality because sometimes you may wanna be a little bit more precise as to where the line is attaching to. If I use a zoom uh, functionality here in TradeStation, and I zoom in this candle right here, you can see how the line is not quite at the low. It's a little bit higher than the low. If we check this other candle where we anchored it to, you can see that it's not quite, the, the box is not quite on the low. So let me show you how you can improve that. Right here, let's right click on the line and go to format trend line. In the settings tab, you can choose to extend left or right. In the calculation tab, you can set how the actual line is attached or calculated. If I choose the fixed point calculation and I say fix it to the low, and I click OK, the line is gonna be automatically adjusted and fix itself to the low of the candle. Now, if I check the, this little candle, you can see that it's right on the low of the bar. So that's one of the ways in which you can control the precision of those trend lines is changing the calculation. Let's go back in there. I'm gonna right click and go to format trend line. So that's a fixed point. You can have different options to choose from. You can do to fix the trend line to the open or to the midpoint of the bar, you know, depending on how you're drawing the, these trend lines. You can be, uh, you can set it to extreme. Extreme is just from low to high or high to low, depending on how you're drawing them, okay? That's an extreme. A regression, a regression is pretty much uh, selecting or drawing a regression line across all the points that you are drawing the trend line on. So let me go ahead and show you that, it's pretty cool. So notice that in this case, it grabbed the opening prices of every candle and it, and it drew a, or a regression line across all those points from anchor to anchor. Now, the nice thing about this regression line is that you can click and drag and you can see that it automatically adjusts. It automatically calculates that regression as I'm pulling it through the chart. Now, this is pretty cool. I'm just dragging the trend line 
And you can see how the regression is being calculated based on those two anchor points as I move from bar to bar. Right click, format trend line. Uh, you have a very fixed angle. If you want to do like a 45 degree angle on that trend line, you can do that as well. If you draw a trend line, let me draw it over here from this low to this low. Okay, and you right click on the trend line. You also have the ability to create what's called a new parallel. Sometimes you want to create some sort of a channel, but instead of drawing the two lines freestyle, which could not be necessarily you know, a, an even channel, you can just right click on any line, create a new parallel, and then you can just grab that line and shift it to a different position and create a channel. All right, so another thing that I wanted to show you on trend lines is how to use them as a measuring tool. This is a great feature of, of these uh, drawing tools because sometimes you may wanna draw or calculate the price movement between one point and another. Let me, let's say for example, that we're looking at a chart of, this is a chart of Apple. And you wanna know from this low, what is the price change from that low all the way to this peak, the very current candle. What I can do is I go to drawing, I can choose trend line. Uh, let me use this feature, which is snap mode. Snap mode is also convenient if you want it to snap to the closest price of the candle in relationship to where you're clicking. So if you click somewhere, it'll just snap to the closest price that it finds. I'm gonna go snap mode. So when I come over here and I click, it'll snap to the low of that bar. I don't have to be so precise. And I'm gonna come over here and click on the high of this bar. Notice that as I move the cursor around, notice that if I move it down here, the trend that doesn't, doesn't follow. And it doesn't follow because it's snapping to the prices up here to the candles moving the cursor over here to the right, and I'm gonna snap it right here to this high. When you're doing measuring like this, it's very convenient to have those labels always displayed. And you can do that by double clicking or you know, formatting the trend line, going to labels and show the labels. I wanna see the percent change. I wanna see how many bars are in between and the time span. Once I click okay, it shows that information right here. What that information means is that from the point where the trend line starts to the point where the trend line ended, there are exactly 52 days, 37 bars, and there's a percent change of 22.88% increase in price. And this is done by using trend lines, not in the natural or, or common way, which is you know to monitor crossovers, but just as a measuring tool where you click on the starting point and click on the end point, and you can have these labels showing you that information on the chart. Okay, again, to show those labels, you just right click, go to format trend line, and go to the labels tab to show or disable the labels. You can set that as a default, so they always come on every time you draw something on the chart. We have some linear regression channels. I showed you how to change the style of the trend line to a regression line. We do have a channel that pretty much does something very similar in the drawing menu. Here's a regression channel. So if I click from here to here, it creates this channel for me. The middle line is the regression line on the open. You can see how it says open right here in parentheses. And then it calculates standard deviations, in this case two, that's what 2SD is, two standard deviations above and two standard deviations below. In order for you to change the calculation of this regression channel, just right click on any of its lines and go to format regression channel. There's a couple things here that you can do. As I said before, by default, the regression line is set up in the open. You can do and change it to maybe the midpoint. Here's the midpoint, high plus low divided by two. And you can use a different number of standard deviations. Let's suppose that I wanna use a 1.5. Once I do that, I click okay. And you can see that it changes right here. Now in parentheses, I see the midpoint and I'm using 1.5 standard deviations on either side. You can pretty much you know, use the number of standard deviations uh, different on each one of the sides if that's something that you'd like to do. In the drawing menu, you also have some time cycles, a way for you to create 
cycles on the chart. By default, they're gonna be rounded like this, and you can click on any of its anchor points to resize and change the cycle or the timing on these cycles. If you right click on this cycle and you say, and uncheck the option here to arc style, it will create lines for you. These are lines that are spaced out at the same distance, and that's why it's called the time cycle. If I click on any of these anchor points, you can reduce the timing or increase the timing from the starting point. In the drawing menu, we also have the Fibonacci tools. If you're familiar with them, all of them you know, calculate based on Fibonacci numbers or Fibonacci percentages. For example, you have the price retracement lines. The price retracement lines are drawn from a peak to a trough or from a trough to a peak. For example, I'm gonna do it from here all the way up here. And you can see that that is a 100% movement and then you have all the retracements. So this is a, when we clicked on the very first anchor point to the other, that is the movement that you're measuring. So whenever the price drops from that point, you're talking about a 23.6% retracement or a 38.2% retracement, which is using the percentages of the Fibonacci calculation. Right here, I have the ability to increase the number of lines or change the percentages if you wanted to do so. So I can right click on the Fibonacci's and I can go to format. I get a dialog showing me all the percentages for the Fibonacci, but it also lets me check more percentages. If I wanna do a 125% and click okay, it'll add another line at 125. I don't see it here because of the scaling, but if I bring in my background dragon and I squeeze, you're going to see the 125%, which I just enabled on the Fibonacci's. All these lines can also be turned on for alerts. So I can go to format the Fibonacci tools and turn the alerts on any of these lines. Let me go ahead and remove this Fibonacci uh, drawing. Fibonacci calculator, price retracement calculator. And uh, let's suppose that we are measuring this drop from this peak to this low and then where the price is currently. So I'm gonna go here to this very high, click. I'm gonna go to this very low, click. And then I'm gonna go to this very high. What that does, it provides me calculations based on Fibonacci retracements. So right now, here are the calculations. My first price was 215. The, price, the second price that I clicked on was 170 and the current price is 209. So the percent retracement right now is 86.52%. That's the current retracement. And then you have all the different prices calculated at different price levels. So that's another way in which you can use these Fibonacci tools to see what prices correspond to each one of these percent retracements. Another tool that I find interesting is the, the Fibonacci extension lines. So price extension lines. Uh, the way that this works is you measure a certain distance between a peak and a trough, and then you project that distance that you measured onto the future. So let's say, for example, that I click from this high to this low, and then I project that distance. Notice that whatever you drew, let me see if I can, I have snap mode on, so. The distance that you measured from this high to this low, that is your 100% movement. So this line right here corresponds to this line right here, but it's being projected into the future. So that's a, an interesting way of drawing Fibonacci lines into the future. So let me go ahead and delete that. A lot of the drawing tools that are here have a lot of uh, documentation in the trade station help files. If you come here in the drawing menu and you find something that catches your eye and, you say, and, you, and you're wondering, how does, the, how does the Andrews pitch for work? Or how does the GAN fan work? There's a lot of documentation that helps you, you know, find information on, on them. So let me go to GAN fan, for example. I'm not an expert on GAN fan, but I do know that there's a lot of information out there that explains how to use it. Uh, this is the way that it looks. Double click here. I can change this to maybe a quarter of a point. But if I'm looking at this and I'm saying, what is what is this doing? What does this represent? Let me show you where you can find at least some 
initial documentation that can help you understand some of these drawing tools. Go to the help menu, get help, and go to platform trading. This will pull up the help documentation of the platform. And you can find pretty much any information on any document right in here. What I do is I come here at the bottom and I go to index. And I just type in whatever it is that I'm searching information on. So I type in GAN, and the first thing that loads up here at the top is the GAN fan drawing object. I click on the help files, and this gives me a brief synopsis of what the drawing object is and how it's used. And right here below, it gives me information on how to format that GAN fan and what I can do to it in order to interpret it. So don't feel like uh, we are left alone to figure out how these drawing tools work. We have created documentation in the TradeStation platform to help you on that goal. All right, class, we reached the end of the class. So I want to appreciate the time that you spent with me. Hopefully, some of the tools that I showed you, you're able to use them in your everyday trading. Again, thank you for your time, and I hope to see you in a future event right here at TradeStation. Goodbye, everyone.